Kurtz Gazaa, your immune system is more dangerous than you think. Let's get it. There's this idea floating around that what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. That surviving a disease leaves you better off. And it seems to make sense because we've all experienced this. When you go through hardship, often you come out more resilient, more ready to face a difficult situation in the future. True. But it turns out that sometimes what doesn't kill you makes you weaker. So yes. what happens when you get sick? Hey, if you hate being sick, smash the like button. You're not saying. The machinery of war. Let's get it. Think of yourself as a large country with a sizable army to defend it. You're surrounded by enemies that want to take your land, your yep. energy, your resources. Yep. This is a matter of life and death, so your body evolved to be sensitive to damage and to the presence of enemies. Because this means that an invasion might happen at any moment and that it has to act fast. Fact. Let's start an invasion and see what happens. The moment your cells... That's crazy, bro. Look, look, look. A dog showing you love is nasty, you know what I'm saying? Because you don't know what the f*** they be eating, licking, all of that. Sniffing. Guys, bro, not even, you, can't, you can't even have love and affection from your, li your little puppy, you know what I'm saying? Your little dog. Crazy. And nine times out of ten, bro, people aren't thinking, oh, don't lick my face, that's gross. You know what I'm saying? People are like, oh, yeah, I love you too, boy. You know what I'm saying? Let's start an invasion Crazy. and see what happens. The moment your cells notice that something is off, they release an onslaught of signal proteins called cytokines. Cytokines. They're like air raid sirens that activate all sorts of immune cells that then themselves release many more cytokines, amplifying mm. the alarm. Okay. Soon, you're flooded with signals that trigger precautions and countermeasures. Mobilization Jeez. is underway. That's crazy. Your brain activates sickness behavior and reorganizes your body's priorities to defense. The first thing you notice is that your energy level drops and you get sleep. Wait a minute, that fuck, bro, that actually makes sense. Like, right before you're gonna get sick, you just, out of nowhere, you feel different. You feel low. Yo, what the fuck? That's crazy. Your brain activates sickness behavior and reorganizes your body's priorities to defense. Oh, shit. The first thing you notice is that your energy level drops and you get sleepy. Yeah. You feel apathetic, often anxious or down, and you lose your appetite. Yeah. Your sensitivity to pain is heightened and you seek out rest. All of this serves to save your energy and reroute it into your immune response. You become a country under attack, switching into a war economy. Oh because properly God. activating your immune system is intensely disruptive and draining. Just like war is expensive for a country as industry switches to building tanks, your immune system demands huge amounts of energy, amino acids, and micro elements to build its weapons. Yep. Take fever. It speeds up your metabolism and makes your cells work harder and faster while creating heat that's pretty stressful for many invaders, but it uses up a lot of calories to maintain. Then your immune system begins to clone millions of specialized immune cells to respond specifically to the enemy infecting you. B cells produce millions of antibodies every second, each requiring hundreds of amino acids to construct. Billions or even trillions of proteins need to be made to refresh the complement system, a minefield inside your blood. Cytokines, the mobilization and information signals, also need constant refreshing. Usually, you acquire your resources by eating. But when you're sick, your body slows down your digestion because it needs a lot of energy you can't spare. So it reaches for the easiest source of amino acids and starts breaking down your muscles. All that muscle that you worked so hard for is sacrificed to keep you alive. Jeez. If you're young and healthy and fit, That's you'll make nice. up for that quickly once you're better. But if you're old or very young, weak or suffer from chronic illness, this may be way too draining. Yep. Your body is literally consuming itself to keep the defense going. If your whole system is already strained, when you get sick, just keeping your immune responses going can overwhelm your capacities. Your immune system is a jerk. Our enemies, too. Your immune system is as dangerous to you as it is to enemies. There's a very fragile balance between the damage caused by an infection and the collateral damage caused by immune cells. One of your first responders are neutrophils. Imagine crazy aggressive chimps with machine guns. 
If a neutrophil encounters enemies, it showers them with chemicals that cut them open, but can also damage civilian cells, especially yep. if the patient is already compromised, for example, by smoking. On top of that, the microorganisms that invade you often release chemicals and toxins that can cause significant damage and cell death. So a serious infection often causes many tiny wounds, literally holes in your organs. As you can imagine, it's not great to have holes and wounds in your organs and your body rushes nah. to close them. Your neutrophil That shit, that's just cringe, bro. That's Loki cringe, you thinking about it. Like, just imagine, like, you can just... Just take the skin off your body, see all your organs, right? And there's fucking little holes in them and shit. Bro, that's cringe. To have holes and wounds in your organs and your body rushes to close them. Your neutrophils and macrophages help by releasing chemicals that signal the body to start repairs, and most of the damage is quickly filled up with regrowing cells. But others are filled with collagen, a sort of fixal organic cement that gives your gooey tissue structural integrity. Mm. You've seen the result in your skin as scars. Yep. A scar is different from the original tissue. It has no functioning cells in it. It's like a sloppily applied cement patch. It can't do what the original tissue was doing. A scar on your heart makes it beat a tiny bit weaker. Yeah. A scar on the lungs no longer captures oxygen. A scar on your liver makes it a worse filter. Yeah. And so as you go through life and survive serious disease after serious disease, the functionality of your organs may decrease. The damage is usually small enough not to affect your quality of life, but can be permanent. Yeah, and then over time, bro, the more you get sick, the more you go through shit, the it's just over time it just shuts down you feel me okay this sounds depressing but there is actually something you can do to avoid a lot of this damage and train your immune system the best way to train your immune system talk to me your immune system is unique everyone has a slightly different immune system that's stronger against some enemies and weaker against others which makes evolutionary sense as this protects our species from being wiped out by a single infection Collectively, the immune system of the human species is a spectrum. Most people respond well enough to an infection, a few are super responders, and a few don't respond well and die. Some people survive the Black Death, are more resistant to HIV or coronavirus, or even resistant against Ebola. Yeah. Others are killed easily by the flu, or are highly vulnerable to certain bacterial infections. Where you are on this spectrum is impossible to predict, and you also respond differently to every possible infection. This is why seemingly very healthy young people died from COVID, while for some elderly people, it was more like a mild flu. The idea that you can weather all... This is why seemingly very healthy young people died from COVID... Semi-healthy, he said? Hold on. Did he infection this is why very healthy while some elderly Seemingly very healthy young people died from covid while for some elderly people it was more like a mild flu hold on that that don't make sense to me wait so because they were healthy it affected them more but wouldn't it wouldn't it make more sense to affect the elderly people because you know what I'm saying? They've been through it more. Their system isn't really up to par with a healthy person, young person. What, bro? That. Maybe I missed his point. I probably, I, I've missed his point for sure. I probably missed it, but I don't know. You also respond differently to every possible infection. This is why seemingly very healthy young people died from COVID while for some elderly people, it was more like a mild flu. The idea that you can weather all sorts of diseases if you never what? get a cold is wrong. You never know what your immune system is good at until it's tested. Yeah. Getting sick is a gamble in life's casino with your health on the line, always. But there is something you can do, hacking one of the best features of your immune system. When you survive a disease, usually you have better defenses against it afterwards. Yeah. You gain memory cells that are very good at killing the specific enemy you fought that day. Yeah. So you either don't get the disease again, or the next infection is much milder. And you can use an incredible achievement of human ingenuity that taps into this mechanism to prevent damage from disease and train your immune system. Vaccines. 
Vaccines basically pretend to be a disease and train your defenses to be ready if it ever. Yep, yeah, that's when you get the flu shot, you end up feeling sick or getting sick, and then you just. You're fine after that, you feel me? Same with the. the. the 19 uh, vaccine. Put it in, it had a little bit of it in it. Some people got sick, they were affected, and then. Vaccines okay. basically pretend to be a disease and train your defenses to be ready if it ever shows up. That's for a real. force, though. The goal is to create the same memory cells that you would get after surviving an infection. But if you can feel some side effects, why should you still do it? Yeah. Nature versus vaccine dojo. Yo, how do you guys feel about the the bovid vaccine, but also the the flu vaccine? You know what I'm saying? Let me know how you guys feel. You have two options to train your immune system. Vaccine pick your, yo, pick your opponent. That's fire. Dojo. Little animation. You have two options to train your immune system. That's hard. Vaccine dojo and nature dojo. In vaccine dojo, you train with paper weapons and learn to defend yourself. Sure, you might get a black eye or a bruise. Sometimes after a vaccine, you get sick for a few days, but that's generally it. No scars, no permanent damage. We discussed vaccine side effects in detail in another video if you want to learn more. Mm. On the other hand, getting a disease to become immune means going to a nature dojo. In nature dojo, you train with real weapons, sharp knives, and swords. Things might still work out, but with way more cuts and wounds. But from yeah. time to time, someone will die. Bro, that and these little video game animations is dope, bro. But with way more cuts and wounds. But from time to time, someone will die, be it a kid from measles or an adult from influenza. Nature Dojo is just way more risky. On top of that, the immunity you get from a vaccine is often better than the natural resistance because they're engineered to engage your immune system in a more productive way. Of course, vaccines are not magic, and sometimes they don't protect us as well as we'd like them to. Maybe because an enemy mutates too quickly, like the Omicron coronavirus, or because your specific immune system does not respond well to the vaccine and builds less of a defense. Yeah. Still, being vaccinated is one of the best tools to train your natural defenses. Some might agree, some might disagree. I really want to know your guys' uh, opinion on that. You know what I'm saying? How do you guys feel? Being vaccinated is one of the best tools to train your natural defenses. In the end, if we look at the stunning progress humanity has made in the last century, eventually we may overcome disease for good. But until then, we can do our best to take care of ourselves and others. Your body and your older self will be grateful to you. Yo, yo. Diseases are not the only problem humanity can... Advertisement, you know what I'm saying? Bro, these visuals just get better and better. And I love the little, you know, slot machine type of vibe they went for. Also, the video game type of look. It's so dope. Let me see. You briefly discussed how being a smoker compromises your immune system, making it sick harder on the body. Would you consider doing a video showing what smoking does to the whole body on the macro and micro level? That would be dope. You know I'm saying that would be dope. It's insane the number of diseases which aren't caused by a virus bacteria, but your body turning against you for one reason or another. The body is scary, whatever it's targeting. Facts. Uh, <clears throat> the immune book was the most interesting book about biology I've ever read. The perfect combination between facts and entertaining metaphors made it so fun to read, and I actually learned a lot too. Uh, your immune book seriously helped me. Oh, his book? Okay, where, where? When I was 12 years old, I contra contracted glandular fever, the Epstein-Barr virus. What is that? And since then, my body has never been the same. It completely destroyed my life. I'm now in my 20s and suffer from multiple autoimmune disorders. Unable to work, have chronic pain, etc. So yeah, amazing. What one small pesky virus can do and how devastating the immune system. That's fucking scary, bro. That's fucking scary, bro. Oh my god. See, bro cringe it just makes me cringe to think about like things just like happening to you bro like stuff like that like, like that comment right it's like you're living your life doing what you do whatever then you contract some shit or get some shit and it's like oh it affects you for the rest of your life that's fucking scary bro that is scary but let me know what you guys thought that's my reaction if you enjoyed give this video a like subscribe if you haven't and i'm out